for ISIS, and they seem to be doing a pretty fair job, and they're doing it under this uh, American air power, coalition air power, dropping bombs on them. So ISIS has shown themselves to be a resilient, rather uh, adaptive enemy, and uh, they are they are going probably to take Kobani if the Peshmerga cannot mount an adequate defense. And from what I'm looking at, Errol, I, I have to tell you, it, it doesn't look good for the Peshmerga. Even these small numbers of, of Iraqi Kurds coming in there, I don't think are going to tip the balance. And just as you were saying that, uh, Colonel Francona, we were looking at a map of the many, many cities that ISIS controls, and this entire uh, U.S.-led effort has yet to roll that back, and we're, of course, seeing Kobani being a major flashpoint. Uh, thanks so much, Colonel Francona, staying up late for us just past 11 p.m. there on the U.S. West Coast. Appreciate your insight. Now, the U.S. president is set to meet with medical volunteers to highlight a point he wants to make. The Ebola policy debate in the U.S. is coming up. Plus, some families in Hawaii are watching and waiting as lava just creeps closer. We'll bring you more on the threat to many people's homes. Stay with us here on CNN. Precision. Grace. Power. Every month, join us for a look at how things all around us move. This month, improving speed and performance in transport. Three tenths to half a second is the difference between coming out first and coming out fifth. The Art of Movement, Thursday on CNN, in association with Amiga. From Beirut, in New Delhi, from Jerusalem, in Jordan, in Doha, in Istanbul, in Cairo, in here, in Abu Dhabi. All roads are barricaded in Jackson Square. These are the midday prayers. You can see the security. He's been shaking people's hands. He's been hugging children. This is the old city of Jerusalem, and this is a melting pot of religion. What is the nature of your support for Hamas? Can we clear this up? Let me push you once more on this, because this is important. How big a concern should this be for not just Turkey, but the West? Tell me something even locals might not know. Who is the biggest influence? Is it, is it still family? Connect the world with Becky Anderson. Sunday to Thursday on CNN. It's life in the fast lane, in the car, and off the track. Stay ahead of the pack with The Circuit on CNN. Track the business behind the billions fueling the sport and keep up with Formula One. The drivers, the legends, and the technology that makes race day happen. Gear up for the US Grand Prix. Visit CNN.com slash motorsport now in association with DHL. What does it mean to go there? It doesn't mean reading about it. It means packing a bag and going there and talking to the people. Talking to activists in secret. Activists risking their lives for speaking to a Western journalist in Damascus. Talking to people on the margins of the story about how they're affected by the decisions of those much more powerful than them. That is why I go there, to get the story firsthand. Welcome back. U.S. President Barack Obama plans to meet later Wednesday with healthcare workers who've returned from West Africa. This is an effort to show support, his support for Ebola volunteers, and to show his opposition to quarantines put in place by some U.S. states. As Jim Acosta reports, critics insist the U.S. policy on Ebola remains inconsistent. Good afternoon, everybody. President Obama tried to address a critical part of an Ebola response containing an outbreak of fear. This is something that will get fixed. America, in the end, is not defined by fear. So the president called on states to follow the CDC's less stringent guidelines for health care workers returning from West Africa and to steer clear of tough quarantine rules. We've got to make sure that those workers who are willing and able and dedicated to go over there in a really tough job, that they're applauded, thanked, and supported. 
That was a not so subtle jab at New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, whose state confined a nurse to a tent inside a hospital for roughly three days. Christie was asked whether he might be sued. Whatever. Get in line. I've been sued lots of times before. Get in line. I'm happy to take it on. Yep. But even as the president tried to calm fears, his administration created more confusion, with the Army going beyond the CDC's protocols and placing some of its soldiers in quarantine. I don't understand how the president could take jabs at the governors of New York and New Jersey for doing things his own military is doing. The nation's hodgepodge approach has raised questions about White House Ebola response coordinator Ron Klain. As the New York Daily News put it, where the hells are you? We're really clever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Since joining the administration, Klain has been out of the public eye and his Twitter account has gone silent. But White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest insisted Klain has performed well in his first week on the job. What has he done? Mm -hmm. Well, there are, um, I, I guess there are a couple of ways to answer that question. Ron has arrived here at the White House early in the morning. Uh, he stayed till late at night. Uh, he's convened a variety of meetings with Not senior him. officials here at the White House. So he's regularly briefed the president. Meantime, Australia is coming under harsh criticism for its freeze on visas for anyone coming from Ebola-affected countries. You may remember we discussed this uh, around this time yesterday. Well, now the UN said the move will discourage relief work in West Africa. Sierra Leone called it draconian, with the informa information minister uh, saying this, quote, it's not going after Ebola, but rather it is against the 24 million citizens of Sierra Leone, Guinea, uh, Liberia, and Guinea. Now, the World Health Organization counts more than 10,000 confirmed or suspected cases of Ebola in West Africa. More than 4,900, as you see on this breakdown, um, of those cases have been fatal. We've watched these numbers creep up each and every week, and the real fear is that these numbers could in reality be much higher. The vast majority of those cases uh, and the deaths, as you see on this map, are in Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. Now, there is uh, one way that outside help could make a substantial difference in the Ebola fight. Experts say that's through education about less risky burial practices. And as Linda Kincaid reports, tradition in Sierra Leone is already giving way to precautions as Ebola victims are laid to rest. In the middle of a very grim epidemic, there is one bright spot. Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, has tripled the number of safe burials of Ebola victims in the past week. Contact with the bodies of Ebola victims has been the leading cause of transmission in West Africa. According to the WHO, Ebola patients are most infectious right after death because that's when the virus overtakes the body. Yet the country's traditional burial practices require that family members wash the body of the deceased loved one and touch it, sometimes even kiss it prior to burial. <laughs> Nearly 5,000 people have died of Ebola in West Africa, almost 1,300 of them in Sierra Leone. And officials estimate about 80% of infections in the Freetown area were caused by touching the dead bodies of Ebola victims. Many countries have stepped up the response to the outbreak, which includes educating people on ways to prevent the spread of the disease. If people can discipline themselves to follow those protocols and resist the temptation to hug their loved ones and to treat them in the ways that Sierra Leoneans have been treating their loved ones for many, many generations, if they can resist that, they can be part of the solution and can avoid infection. The hope now is that this trend of education and prevention can be continued in neighboring countries, Guinea and Liberia. Linda Kincaid, CNN. And we just see that healthcare workers really do face a major risk. Well, a guest contributor to our website says healthcare workers have always rallied to care for the sickest among us, and he says we'll need that to continue if the world wants to beat Ebola. Take a read at our website, CNN.com. All right, uh, coming up, lava has been flowing from a Hawaiian volcano since June, but now it's become a major threat to some families there. We'll tell you what lies in its path after this short break. Stay with us. Omega Lady Matic presents Leading Women. I believe that the reason I really understand our consumers, I am her. Is that a real thing? Yeah. 
Oh, I need that. No, I need the antler head. I love it. But I also like to get a good deal. So I really understand the behavior. I'm Mindy Grossman. I'm a mom, a wife, a friend, the CEO of HSN Inc. But most of all, I'm a disruptor. When it comes to shopping, Mindy Grossman knows what's going to make you part with your money. She spent decades in fashion and